Merry Christmas. The emotions are, are right here tonight as I walked into the church on Christmas Eve and that, that energy, that, that vibe that we all know is, is not here tonight, and yet it is. And we give God thanks for this technology that can still bring Christmas to us on this Christmas Eve. And as I will be saying in, in the sermon tonight, Christ is born. Christ is born especially in this time of, of such uh, things so unsettled. Welcome to our Christmas Eve worship tonight. Uh, I'm Pastor Peter Froke, by the way. I, I know we have uh, uh, friends and uh, family uh, watching tonight, and we now begin our Christmas Eve service, and we do have bells, and we begin with our prelude with Doug and Megan. O oh God, place your trumpets in our hands, and we will make a mighty sound. For unto the world a child is born, unto the world a Savior is given. His hands will split the yoke of our burdens, his knee will snap the rod of our afflictions. He will establish peace upon the earth, breaking the bow and shattering the spear casting the boots of each tramping warrior into the leaping flames. You have struck the spark, Lord. The refiner's fire is kindled in the darkness, an ember glows in the silent night. Unto the world a child is born, unto the world a Savior is given. Place your trumpets in our hands, and we shall call the world to peace.
with you all. And also with you. Tonight, old dreams die and new dreams come to life. The promise is fulfilled. Glory, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, earth peace. Hope gives way to joy and prayer to proclamation. Glory, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, earth peace. Our candles illuminate our story. Dawn invades midnight. The light of the world has come. Glory, Glory to God, God in the highest and on earth, earth peace. This light is a light for all, igniting a flame within the soul, warming us from within, radiating love, lighting our lives with the presence of God come alive in human flesh, within us and among us, now and always. Glory, Glory to God, God in the highest, and on earth, earth peace, and goodwill to all. all. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence, and in the last day wake to the brightness of his glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. I will bless the Lord at all times. The Lord's praise shall continually be in my mouth. Lord, bless the reading of your word. Make it come alive in our midst. Amen. The Holy Gospel on this Christmas Eve comes to us from the Gospel of Luke, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. 
To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The English poet William Blake writes, In the universe there are things known and things unknown, and in between them there are doors. Tonight with Mary we are in this in between space, pondering the known and the unknown. Sisters and brothers, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior, the Bethlehem child, Jesus the Christ. Amen. On the second Sunday of Advent, December the 6th, we worshiped outside like we've been doing since the beginning of July. While the weather most Sundays has been pleasant, December 6th was, well, like December 6th, cold and blustery. Still people came. A congregation gathered. I will never forget standing up to preach. 
I had a fire in front of me, and I looked out at the congregation, and it was like I was preaching to 20 Darth Vaders. People masked, people hooded, people wrapped in blankets, and I couldn't quite see them all because my own glasses were fogging up. Just another surreal moment in 2020. This scene is forever etched in my mind because it's that space between the known and the unknown. We left the known world of worshiping indoors in December, and we wondered, how are we going to worship in the future? Contemplatives call this liminal space, the space where life is not as it was, but we don't know yet what it will become. Liminal space stands on the threshold of that doorway to the unknown. Perhaps we can name this entire year liminal space. Picture where we are at year's end compared to where we were back in February. It's been unsettling. Preaching to a congregation of Darth Vader's, believe me, it's a bit unsettling. And preaching into a phone on Christmas Eve is unsettling. As I said in the welcome, it's Christmas Eve. And, well, I was going to say there's nobody here. There's a, there's, a, there's a couple of us gathered. It is surreal. As it is, I know for you tonight, you're worshiping on Christmas Eve in front of your computer, perhaps all by yourself. We've left the known world behind. So let's just name it tonight. In this space, in this time, Christmas is just plain weird. Christmas Eve it's kind of sad, and maybe even a little scary, as we wonder what is behind the door to the future. Yet in this space, and in this time, it is sacred because God chooses to be born to us this very night. Mary lived in liminal space. Mary left her old world behind last Sunday with the announcement from the angel Gabriel, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son. Now tonight, nine months later, Mary lives through her new reality. Nine months pregnant, Mary endures powers that are beyond her control. A decree from the emperor forcing her to travel to Bethlehem. A body choosing to deliver far from home, in a manger nonetheless, because there was no room in the inn. Of course there was no room in the inn. Everybody was coming to Bethlehem because of the emperor's decree. So many life events converge on Mary tonight that when the shepherds make known what had been told them about her child, all Mary can do is ponder. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. But no, 
that this pondering for Mary is not a passive activity. Dr. Caroline Lewis, on the podcast Working Preacher, said this week, the word ponder in Luke is active. You know, traditionally we think of this word ponder and we think of reflection, or we think of thinking, maybe with a heavy heaviness. When someone tells us, Well, let me ponder on this. We picture them sitting and thinking about how they're going to respond. But Caroline Lewis says that in Luke, this word ponder is is not so passive. To ponder in the Christmas story is to experience everything that has been thrown at you. To ponder is to live through everything that has converged in this very moment and space. Mary's pondering is not a sentimental thought of the wonder of this night. Mary's pondering is not even a reflection of what the birth means. It's not a passive sitting. Instead, Mary's pondering is the effort she makes at living through a life that is not going according to plan. And it's Mary's pondering that allows her to stand on that threshold of the door to the future, the door to the unknown, And through her pondering, Mary is able to open that door and live into her future. Pete Rush is one of the saints from my former parish in Long Valley. Pete was one of those guys who seemed to have nine lives. Pete suffered from numerous ailments, a couple of bouts of cancer, heart disease. He had a knee replacement. He had a hip replacement. He suffered Lyme disease. He had stomach problems. Pete was an expert on the human body only because of all of his ailments. But one day I remember Pete pondering as he gave me the definition of life. He said, Pastor, life is what happens when you're planning something else. But this never stopped Pete from living. He had a lifetime of unexpected, unplanned events but he always seemed to live through what was behind that door to the future. He opened that door again and again, and every time he discovered that God was waiting for him on the other side. The result was a full and very rich life. We can sit in liminal space and yearn to go back to what we know. We can be bitter tonight that Christmas is not what it's always been. Or we can ponder with Pete. We can ponder with Mary. We can choose to live through this time and space and gain the courage to open the door to the unknown. Different as tonight is, the Christmas proclamation remains the same. 
Do not be afraid. For behold, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Sometimes we really don't hear this good news until we're able to leave the old behind and embrace what lies ahead. Christmas Eve, 2020. Doug, how, how's it feel tonight? <laughs> Doug goes, yeah, it's, that's Christmas Eve, 2020. Tonight, names are reality. Life has thrown so much at us this past year. So many circumstances beyond our control have converged with us in this time and space. Still, this space is sacred. And tonight is a holy night. And so we ponder. We, with Mary, make the effort to live through this night because God will still show up on the other side. God shows up in the unexpected. The good news of great joy shows up in the unwelcome. The Bethlehem child shows up in the untraditional. God's greatest gifts often come when life isn't going according to plan. Christmas Eve 2020. Tonight we stand on the threshold of that door to an unknown future. Don't be afraid to open it, to live in it, and rejoice with it. Because this night, we are assured that God is with us and God will continue to be with us. Because a child has been born. Tonight, we open the door to the future and we live with the faith of Jesus the Christ.
we confess our faith using the words of the Christmas Creed. I believe in Jesus Christ and in the beauty of the gospel begun in Bethlehem. I believe in the one whose spirit glorified a little town and whose spirit still brings music to persons all over the world in towns both large and small. I believe in the one for whom the crowded inn could find no room. And I confess that my heart still sometimes wants to exclude Christ from my life today. I believe in the one whom the rulers of the earth ignored and the proud could never understand, whose life was among common people, whose welcome came from persons of hungry hearts. I believe in the one who proclaimed the love of God to be invincible. I believe in the one whose cradle was a mother's arms, whose modest home in Nazareth had love for its only wealth, who looked at persons and made them see what God's love saw in them, who by love brought sinners back to purity and lifted human weakness up to meet the strength of God. I confess my everlasting need of God, the need of forgiveness for our selfishness and greed, the need of new life for empty souls, the need of love for hearts grown cold. I believe in God who gives us the best of God's self. I believe in Jesus, the Son of the living God, born in Bethlehem this night for me and for the world. In our prayers this evening, we remember the new family upon the death of Joan's father earlier today. Let us pray. Mighty God, rain your power on your people. In a weakened world, our hands grow weary, our hearts grow hard. But on this day, great power is born, not where life is safe, but where life is sorry. Not where life is sterile, but where life is soiled. Not where life comes easy, but where life is fought for. Joy to the world. Let I earth receive her power. power. Wonderful Counselor, send us your word. In a crying world, our speech fades from our lips. Our ears close to understanding. But on this day, the word is born, not to endure silence, but to testify to truth. Not to muffle our hearing, but to unstop our ears. Not to condemn creation, but to transform it. Joy to the world. Let, Let earth, earth receive her word. word. Everlasting God of hope, eternal mother of faith, lend us your joy. In an anxious world, our hearts tremble at the thought of tomorrow. Our eyes are cast upon the ground. But on this day, all joy is born. Not that hearts may yield to gloom, but that they might prepare him room. Not that eyes may be bound to earth, but that they might see the glory of heaven. Swaddle our world in your arms, even as the child was swaddled by Joseph and Mary. Joy to the world. All joy is come. Prince of Peace, grant us your peace. In our wounded world, our spirits bow to sin. Our souls are enslaved by sorrow. But on this day, almighty peace is born, so that our spirits may not worship other gods, but the God whose rod falls upon the oppressors, so that our souls may not break beneath their burdens, but grow strong while carrying the loads of the friendless. Let heaven and nature sing. Let, Let earth, earth receive her peace. Into your gracious hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your steadfast mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Prince of Peace be with you always. And also with you.
worship continues with our offertory prayer. Let us pray. Generous God, you have created all that is, and you provide for us in every season. Bless all that we offer, that through these gifts the world will receive your blessing. In the name of Jesus, Emmanuel, we pray. Amen. Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. On the eve of Christmas, hatred will vanish. On the eve of Christmas, the earth will flourish. On the eve of Christmas, war will be gone. On the eve of Christmas, 
love will be born. And now receive the benediction on this most holy night. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Peace Christ is with you. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.